don't let me drown. Hey, what's up, you guys? Today I'm making a video talking about my last impatient experience. February this year. I was impatient the entire month. That's the only way I can really say. And people have asked me a lot of questions about this impatient visit, why it happened, what led up, did I know it was going to happen, what was it like, just anything, I wish it was different, should I have left early, should I have stayed in longer? All of the questions, and I'm going to answer every single one in this video. To be very clear, I have avoided making this video just because I wasn't comfortable with saying why I was in hospital because it was a very, it's different to all my other admissions. I went impatient during the start of February. February was not an easy month and January was even worse and I didn't make very many videos in January and when I did I was very slow and very distracted in them and that was because I was very severely hallucinating. I just played down the fact of how I was. I was seeing these shadows coming off the walls and it came like these 3D figures in black and they would just be around me all the time and I felt like I couldn't move, I couldn't breathe. I wasn't sleeping because they was over me and around me or if I turned the light off they were still there and I could still hear them and I said the hallucin side of things was really bad and I just couldn't, I couldn't have continued in the community the way I was. Second reason, my PTSD was really really bad, it would get to a point where I was very suicidal which is the next point but my PTSD was so bad. I found flashbacks that were hours long, it wasn't just a few minutes, a few hours, it was an extended period of time that a lot out of me and I was exhausted but I also couldn't sleep and I wasn't functioning very well, I didn't go to uni because I couldn't function and I kept trying to fight through it and push through it with the community, I tried to get support in the community and every phone call I made was to try and avoid a hospital admission. Another reason would be my medication was completely fucked, it didn't do anything and it was pointless. The, the fourth thing would be my depression. Those of you who don't know, I've been diagnosed with depression now for just over a year. It did come as a shock when it happened. It did. And then it got really bad in January and I was actively suicidal. The day the police came, Jordan phoned them and I'm still grateful that Jordan phoned them. The home treatment team phoned them. Um, everyone said I didn't have capacity and capacity is something you need to be able to make decisions about your own care. I was told you're detained in a mental health factory, you don't have capacity you are coming with us and I thought I screamed and then these shadows came by me and I just huddled up and no one knew what was going on and when I came back round after I was in hospital a bit I explained to the police that was opposite me I was, I was, I was having an episode I was, I was seeing things around me I wasn't trying to avoid you I was trying to avoid the shadows and it, they, 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 they didn't understand that I wasn't trying to get away from them I was trying to get away from the hallucination even though I knew it was a hallucination it was still scary and that's the thing that I've been finding really hard the fact that I have insight into what's going on with my life has made it very hard for me to get help I am starting private EMDR therapy and I'm also starting art therapy next week which will be a huge help for me, it'll really, it'll help the way I function but to avoid hospital admissions but to be very blunt, when I, got, when I got taken to hospital I knew I needed to be in hospital which is why when they said would you go in hospital if we, we said you needed to I'd say, I said yes because I know I need it and I know if I go home I'll just go and I will kill myself. That hospital admission happened for a number of different reasons, there's not one definitive reason that led up to that. The main reason being mental health teams ignored my deterioration within my mental health and it hit a point of breaking. So right now I'm starting therapy. Yes, I know the EMDR therapy is going to make me really unstable because I have to go and live through old, old events. What I'm probably going to do for them few nights is I'm going to make sure that I have my anxiety meds and sleeping tablets and I'll just take them if things get too bad or I'll contact the home treatment team or the single point of access or someone if I need help. The thing is as well, like that's the thing, no one ever assumes things are bad for me because I'm, I reach out for help because of the insight, but because of the insight I don't get help. Like yes I'm diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and I've talked about this a lot throughout like videos and I'm going to go to that. Initially that was my primary diagnosis. From this admission it was written down that PTSD was my primary diagnosis and then dissociation and BPD symptoms followed. So I don't really know what that means with that. I'm more focused on PTSD anyway at the moment. I want to get that dealt with and sorted and I can't live with flashbacks anymore to be honest. It's not cheap and <laughs> believe me my student loan is going to hate me but it's worth it because it means I have dealt with something that has kept me from doing what I want to do. With regards to the whole impatient stay, was it worth it? Yes. If I hadn't had that admission, I wouldn't be alive. Things were getting too bad and I couldn't get out of bed. My depression was bad and I can't even reiterate how bad my depression was at that moment. Like, I made a video the other day showing me tidying up the aftermath. And that was in the period of like January that I did that happen. Like the whole room was just covered in rubbish, and that is not. Hence why I'm standing here. 
But it really does get to me. I'm just like, how did no one notice that things were getting as bad as they were when I was really struggling? And I don't know, that hospital admission is something that I think I'm proud that I did. My mum agrees with the fact that I went in hospital, which is a big thing for me. My mum never agrees with me being in hospital, which is nice. I had amazingly supportive friends like Kay, Beth, Jordan, Emma, Georgia. Everyone who's been involved in helping me through that month was amazing. And whether it was just by them sending me a message, and you guys as well, I got so many messages on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and from you guys saying I hope you're okay to talk and it, it was such an amazing feeling and would I, would I go impatient again if I needed to? Yes. I did say this during my last mission but I'm done fighting the systems, nothing to fight. Like yes, the home dream teams are bad. Nothing I say or do is going to change that. So I'm now focusing on therapies that are private and I know not everyone can afford private therapies and I know that some people do have to rely on the NHS and then people I will say this stick at it and wait because therapy does help and I know that it does like I said I'm currently waiting to do art therapy and EMDR therapy EMDR therapy is eye movement desensitization it's gonna help me um I found an amazing therapist with amazing feedback, amazing reviews, and affordable, if I might add, and with student discounts, which I appreciate. The whole admission happened because it needed to happen. Like, the medication change needed to happen, and it happened. Like, my medication change has been the biggest thing, and the biggest turning point for me. They can't increase the one antidepressant I'm, I'm on, which is venlafaxine. That one antidepressant is one they can't increase because it reacts really badly to me, like, how I am. So they added another antidepressant called trazodone, and I take that twice a day with the venlafaxine and my mood's been really good from that. And to help the hallucinations and my sleep, they put me on to quetiapine, which has helped massively. I've not had a single hallucination since leaving hospital and believe me, I'm grateful. My mood is still a little bit up and down, but it's a manageable level. Like I said to Kay on the phone the other day, I was like, my mood isn't really unstable anymore. It's like, there, like I know what it is. I'm also on Lorazepam and Diazepam still, I'm on them for my anxiety because I do have really bad anxiety and I don't go out without taking something because I can't without crying or breaking down. I just can't. Like I can talk to a camera for hours. But I don't know, just the idea of going out and talking to people who I don't know I, the, the, and even if I'm not going out to talk to someone, the idea that someone could want to talk to me for directions or something, that terrifies me. I didn't talk much about why I went in hospital. Uh, I don't really know why I didn't. And to start with, it was because I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to go back over all of it. Two, I wasn't sure I wanted to. And then I realised this channel's my life, it's a diary, you guys know more about me than my family do. You are all there for me, you are all supportive and you're all going through very similar things, is what I learned. And for me to not share with you, I felt like I was neglecting that fact. I end up not obligated to tell you what goes on in my life, but it, I feel like it's an important thing for me to do. I've been in both voluntarily and on a section. Going in voluntarily was the best decision I made, but my advice to anyone who wants to do MDR, go on the waiting list, save that £5 a week and pay for it. Like, I need to do with it. Like, I've reached a point in my life that I just need to deal with it so I can move on and that's one of the most important things. So yeah, this video's been a bit of a downer I feel. I want to do a Q&A video soon so please leave some questions down below if you haven't already. If you have any video requests also leave them down below. If you didn't know I have a Patreon, it is linked on the end for the video, it's also linked in the description down below. I have a book, there's a video coming out on Tuesday talking about my book and why I wrote it and all that lovely stuff. That video has been really highly requested. So I did that, it's ready for Tuesday. This video is going up today, which is Saturday. So, hello people on Saturday. I'm still with some of this, then we go. Anyway, I am going to go, so thank you guys so much, so much for supporting me. What do you think of my new car? I want to make it look bright. It is really bright, like... Let me try and stand so the, the light is better. Like, it's really blue. I can't see it on camera. So don't mind, I'm going to end this video here. If you're new here, like that subscribe button, give it a little gold punch. Also leave a thumbs up and a comment down below if you have any suggestions, questions or ideas. Ooh, I did my outro. Peace, guys.